Hello and welcome back to the Finally Quit Porn podcast. Today I'm joined by our guest, Mary Porras, founder of the Beyond Compulsion Method and who has very successfully helped me quit porn for good. And I'm excited to get into another episode where we'll be talking about quitting porn. So welcome back, Mary. How are you doing? I'm doing good today. How are you? I'm not too bad. I've got the, got the COVID-19 at the minute and just had a crazy week at Glastonbury Festival. Mad, mad place. Honestly, it's the biggest festival in the UK. I've been six times now and it's just like being in a different planet. Um, I absolutely loved it with my best friends, music, people dressed up in all kinds of ways. They have all sorts of tents, everything's going on, so much to do, so much to see. And now I'm just back to reality. Um, but yeah, it's been good. It's been good. And I'm reality happy to... and COVID. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Apart from the COVID, but um we're all good, all good. So today, what should we talk about? Well, let me ask you a few questions then, Mary, because I think something that I've learned from you probably more than anyone else is actually how how empowered we are as human beings to make choices for ourselves and I want to basically just ask you like why do you think so many people feel like they actually can't quit porn when really it's all kind of going on in their minds and they totally can quit porn well you know it's interesting because I I had a had a guy contact me and who wants to quit porn who listened to our podcast and um he He's literally, I could just sense the fear in his voice. I felt so bad for him, you know, and I got, uh, sent him some of the videos just to get started. And he, he, he didn't even watch them. I checked in with him yesterday and I was like, you know, did you, did you watch that, the phase one of the videos so you could get started? And he said he was just like having so much resistance and feeling so afraid because I think it's because of all the failed attempts, you know, it just doesn't want to fail again. And I tried to tell him, you know, like, it's not you, you know, when, when addictions are being treated with things that actually are going to perpetuate the addiction is so damaging to these people because they think, oh my God, it's just me, but what's wrong with me, which then feeds some basic deprivation thinking or excuse me, junky thinking of self-deprecation, right? I have a problem. There's something wrong with me. I'm innately flawed because I've tried and I've tried and I've tried. And then he's been trying for 16 years, you know, and, and he's like afraid to try again. I'm like, don't be afraid. It's not you or just acknowledge the fear, you know, at least it's not you, but it's, it's the, the things that are being taught, you know, maybe well-intentioned but damaging to people you know yeah. so they can go down that rabbit hole of self-deprecation which is um is a very standard it's one of the categories of junky thinking you know is like where you start beating yourself up and then it, it deteriorates you know to what's the point you know something's wrong with me and then of course it leads into well I might as well just use the porn right because there's something wrong with me anyway I'm never going to be able to stop this and just the junky thinking spirals out of control you know so <clears throat> I try to encourage him you know just start with the first phase and that'll really help yeah. with that resistance and that yeah <clears throat> but sad it's sad you know I I feel bad it's just like I want to just reach out and be like it's not you you know, it's the methods that are perpetuating this problem and making you feel worse, you know, yeah, yeah, big time, feel big more time. helpless. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I want to kind of chip in with, you know, how just now we were creating this quiz to help people identify whether they're addicted to porn or not. And yeah. one of the questions was, how many times have you tried to quit porn and been unsuccessful? And we were putting in like the options and it was like, I don't know, maybe like one to five, five to 10, 11 to 25 and so on. And then I was like, actually, you know what? I think we need some bigger numbers in here because yeah. for me anyway, if I was taking that quiz, I'm looking at a hundred minimum, you know, a hundred failed attempts yeah. minimum. That's sort of why I called this podcast finally quit porn. Yeah. So I wanted to kind of just express how, look, I had been trying 
everything I could sort of get my hands on to try and quit and nothing was working. Like it was really, really difficult to quit. And yeah. what I would say to anyone listening is that I don't think many people are going to permanently quit this until they change their level of thinking, because I think it's all about how you think. It's not about who you are. It's not about what's happened to you in the past. It's not about trauma. It's not about your living circumstance and maybe having maybe like a bad job or maybe gone through some horrible stuff right now and you're going through that stuff right now. It's not about any of that. It really is about how you think about this situation and overcoming that junkie thinking and then also having a very practical tool to actually know how to deal with those urges when they come Mm -hmm. up because they will come up. That's just an absolute inevitable thing. One of the questions we added was, have you noticed that when you try to stop and then you you have a failed attempt, then your porn use increases, which is, it's, that's just goes to show like probably why this guy I'm working with is like afraid because it's like you try to stop and then it increases when, when you try to stop with, without a method that is actually going to change your neural pathways that you're just hanging on, willing it out, you know, then once you, once you can't hang on anymore, you know, because you're just trying to not do it, then of course it increases. And then you're, and then you're going to be doing it more because you're like breaking out of this little prison you've created in your own mind. It's like, ah, I can do it, you know, and then there you go. And I've seen the same thing with food compulsion where people, um, they basically go on some crazy diet and, uh, you know, have the totally wrong focus to dealing with food compulsion by going on a diet. And I call it, you know, gaining the weight back with interest. Every diet they go on, they gain the weight back, but more than they, than they lost. Right. So then that's where the obesity comes from the, the morbid obesity, because, you know, that's, that's what's on the rise is like not, not the overweight category, but the obese category where we're projected to be 50 per, 51% obesity by 2030. Mm. Um, obesity, not overweight, because the overweight category, it just kind of goes like this, but then they just, it's like, oh my God, they just break out of their willpower or whatever they're trying to do, their diet plan. And then they, then they just start eating more, you know, out of control, more beyond what is reasonable and then build a tolerance and then well i think in in the context of porn one thing that's like really kind of starting to emerge now is something that people are getting hooked on is the female domination financial domination all of that as well where people are spending a lot of money on only fans and other platforms where they're paying these women and men as well, extortionate amounts just to feed their novelty and to sort of satisfy that almost like a desire to get even deeper into their addiction. We had a guy actually about six months ago, one of our first clients who came to us with this problem in particular, um, he was really struggling because he was paying more more and more money. And I think that definitely ties into this kind of deprivation thinking and the sometimes like the more you try not to do something, the deeper you end up going when you eventually inevitably actually engage in the compulsive behavior because you kind of want to get to a position. And I think we had a talk about this recently. I don't know if it was on the podcast or not, uh, but you were saying, you know, did you look at that progressively novel content because you basically wanted to get to a point where it was like, you you look at stuff so, so bad or you do something so incredibly bad, like maybe you spend 200 pounds on OnlyFans and that's like so not aligned with who you are and how you usually are as a person that it's like you're doing that stuff to try and actually get into the hole, get into like the worst place possible yeah. so you never do it again in the future. And I think that's definitely how I acted in the past is I would look at stuff, as I've said before and in recent podcasts, like some of the weird like sissy porn shit some of the yeah just general stuff like on Pornhub even I guess um, like many years ago where I was kind of looking at stuff that would try and get me into a place where I'm like I will never ever look at porn again but that just fundamentally goes against how addiction actually works yeah well it's the idea like 
well, it's kind of like aversion therapy, you know, I mean, like I've had food compulsives, you know, tell me many times that they would like binge to the point that they make themselves totally sick. Right. And so then that's going to motivate them to stop, which it just doesn't work that way. Or like, think of like the old ant abuse where they would, people would take a certain like kind of pill. And then if they would drink alcohol, they would get violently ill or shick for smoking. Shick was like, they would electrocute people to like make the association like, okay, I take a cigarette and I get an electric zap, right? You know, shick it was called, but um, it's uh, pain has no memory. You know, the thing is, is it's like, it doesn't work that way. That's using, you know, to extremes is not going to motivate you to stop. It's just going to make you want to do it more. It's going to build your tolerance more, you mm. know? I mean, but it just, it speaks to motivation, you know? I'm trying to stop doing this. So I'm going to do this crazy thing, you know? Yeah. In order to try to. Yeah. I'll tell you what I do get find myself interesting. disgusted enough that I'm going to want to stop, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and what I do find interesting is like how, like before me and you, obviously, I was kind of trying to quit for myself and I had. Well, I thought I had some success because obviously I did the no fab streaks and I did quite well on those after a period of time. But then I eventually, eventually always like relapsed and kind of was back in the cycle. But yeah. the first like long streak, and I'm sure I would have mentioned this on the podcast before, but the first long streak that I had was when I felt really, really terrible after a relapse. And I actually videoed myself uh, and just like selfie camera, I was on my own back in Portugal in 2020 and it was like a video of myself talking to the camera about three minutes long just saying how utterly horrendous I felt and all of that sort of stuff and I watched that video pretty much every day when I woke up for about 60 70 days ended up stopping watching it kind of got over confident you know the junkie thinking came back of oh it's fine I've quit now I'm never looking again I don't have the desire and just denying the reality of addiction which is like yeah you are going to want the porn so I started to say to myself I don't want porn blah 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 anyway point is ended up relapsing but I would say that video was actually one of the closest things I did to the remember letter and this method yeah. and it was actually that was the longest streak I'd had you know going 82 days was double my previous longest streak of 40 days back in the nofap sort of era for myself yeah. um so I think there is definitely some truth in kind of getting into that dark place and documenting it but then also actually getting into that memory and connecting with how horrible you feel in that moment that's the important yeah. part I think looking at the like femdom or financial domination like doing all of that stuff like that isn't going to help you quit porn but if you can document how you feel after any relapse regardless of what you've looked at and connect to how you feel in those moments and connect to that you know frequently especially in the moments that you have the desire then you may be actually on the right path towards gaining real freedom from this yeah and I feel like that's like really good intuition on your part to make that video and to document okay this is what this is how I feel when I do this but that's just one piece of the puzzle, you know? And I think that some of the other methodologies may be out there, oh, document how you feel and whatever, but that that's just one piece. And if the thing is, is if you can't get into the desire long enough, which is what we use the script for, to be able to even get to the choice making process, you know, if you're gonna, if you're just going to keep like running from it or trying not to think about it or avoiding triggers or whatever else the you know, the, the advice tells people, I mean, there's, there's so many more pieces to it, to be able to get into the desire, stay in the desire long enough and, and be able to address a junkie thinking very specifically, you know, that's going to come up even when you are watching this video or reading your remember letter or whatever, when it's like, Oh, it wasn't really that bad. Mm. And you only want to do it once and then you, or you can just stop again, blah, 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 blah. You know, you don't know how to deal with all that junky thinking that's going to come up. That's a nice tool, but it's not enough. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Another thing actually just has kind of been on my mind recently and kind of, as I said at the start, like 
we didn't decide a topic for today's podcast, so it is just going to be a bit of whatever comes to mind. But yeah, going to Glastonbury and then coming home the other night, and it's kind of gone from this massive high of, you know, I was drinking a fair bit at Glastonbury with my friends and um, just having like this amazing time, regardless of the drink. The drink wasn't really, like, I didn't really care about the drink. It could have been either or. But anyway, point is, having this amazing time and yeah, you you just your senses are just so totally ignited by all of this amazing stuff going on around you. You're hearing amazing music. Like there's probably about 30 different artists on that I went to see and just absolutely yeah. loved. You go from that state to being back in your apartment right now I've got what COVID-19. So I'm feeling really ill. I'm on my own in an apartment. I've not seen anyone for three days now because I've been like basically self-isolating on my own go from that state to this state and it's like there is not a shadow of doubt in my mind that before meeting you in this method I would have definitely looked at porn by now you know I, I can't remember any situation where I've been in such a high and go into such a low and there's this like transfer of energy from one state to another and me not seeking some sort of substance to kind of get myself back up to a higher state again like mentally yeah so that for me I think it's just something I really want to kind of express some sort of gratitude for as well. And also just kind of share with the audience that like that is fully, fully possible. Like no matter what context or what life situation you're in, like for me, one of my biggest ever triggers in the past was definitely going from like a really, really good time to being alone and isolated and on my own and having a bad time. So I just think when you actually learn how to deal with urges, it's like, anything is possible like you really really can have any life situation and you will just be able to handle it because you know okay if I have an urge I am going to use a very specific tool and go to that and it doesn't not you know like obviously we're going to be a bit biased and advocate learning like the script and our tool but I think any tool if you have a tool that works for you for quitting porn and you can use that consistently like you that that's freedom like you are free for good um but yeah I just kind of wanted to put that out there as well because it has been really interesting to me because I'd say this has been one of the first times that I've genuinely just felt really really happy and fine for like two or three days now despite being in a situation which in the past would have caused me a lot of pain and sadness and frustration because I wouldn't have known how to deal with my emotions and that would have led me to looking at porn yeah, didn't you say like you came back and you had like maybe five minutes of <laughs> thinking about it, a little desire, whatever, read your script and that was it. So there was just another opportunity to be able to show yourself that you can maybe want it coming back. I mean, and, and just comparatively, you know, like you would have done it. You would have probably done it a lot when you got back from the from the festival and everything and been alone. But here you had like a small desire dealt with it and now you're yeah. you're good you're good to yeah, go yeah. You know? yeah, yeah i'm definitely not saying that didn't have any desire at all but yeah it probably was honestly like five minutes just read through the script yeah. you got your option a you got your option b and it's just like such an obvious decision when you actually know those consequences so much like the consequences now in my mind is so so clear that there's just yeah. it's not really that difficult to think through that choice because it's just so so clear that if I were to go look at porn, the consequences just massively outweigh that temporary escape from some discomfort, you know? Neuroplasticity. Yeah, yeah. So I guess that's the brain changing in action, which is nice, which is nice. You've done the work, Tom. You've done the work and you see how how it uh, changes your life and changes the way that you feel. And so then, of course, there's even more motivation to, to keep doing it and yeah, to not feel threatened and not feel, you know, conflicted at, just because you might have a desire or a want thing here and there, you know? Yeah. It's just to make yeah. you want to do it. But, but I just like, I think that's yeah. the other thing with Glastonbury is because I was watching all these like amazing performers who were just like really kind of embracing life and just doing what they loved and being creative. I kind of come home as well and I've been a bit like, right, I really, really want to kind of express this message with more people and kind of help more people quit as well because as I said earlier on this podcast if you change how you think you will change your life like you will change how you act like that is just possible for anyone and if I could just put what's in your head Mary 
in terms of your knowledge in 34 years of experience into the heads of our audiences if anyone yeah. out there is struggling with porn it's like I know with certainty they would be able to quit porn because you've worked in this long enough and you have the knowledge especially like the unanswerable questions like they're just yeah. crazy like the unanswerable questions are just mad how that works but if we can pull that knowledge in people's heads they will be able to quit porn and then they'll be able to enjoy experiences like going to a festival and not have to come back from like a great time away and think about struggling with porn it just becomes an automatic decision of a b make my choice change my brain yeah. move on with my life job done and not have to substitute some other some other addictive behavior in order to try to deal with the desire you know because that's just uh that's a that's like the snowball you know <laughs> going down keeps gaining more and more snow as it rolls down the hill it's like gaining more and more and more compulsions i just i'm going to be working with a gentleman on friday who had a gastric bypass two years ago and now he's gambling, spending, and alcoholic. So, or, you know, drinking a lot of alcohol, whatever. But, and for all we know, probably using porn too. A lot of people don't tell me about that. But if he's doing a lot of screen time, he's probably doing porn as well. So, but just, I mean, people out there need to understand that this whole idea that you're going to substitute a healthy behavior, a healthy lifestyle, you know, and, just, you know, focus on exercise and nutrition and whatever else, just, you know, creativity, whatever else it is you're going to focus on that if you're going to use that in an attempt to stop a compulsive behavior, that's not going to work. It's really, it looks good on paper, but that's not what happens. You go for something that's mood and mind altering in order to alleviate the withdrawal symptoms, even just temporarily, you know, the very temporarily probably because then you never break free of your original addiction then you end up with another addiction. And that's what we're seeing all around us, you know, is like people trying to deal with an addiction end up with multiple addictions. And the next thing you know, they're just like, it's in a really bad place, you know, mm -hmm. and no freedom, you know, no yeah. freedom. But it's that idea that there's junky thinking that gets validated out in the world. Oh, I need something. I can't deal with the way I feel. I need something, you know, and rather than, well, what you, you don't, you can just feel the feelings once you have a tool to be able to do that and get through the withdrawal. And, and, and then you don't have to be live your life being chased by, you know, some compulsive desire to change the way that you feel. Yeah. Yeah. The way that you feel is just an okay thing. And guess what? Feelings change on their own. You don't have to mm. feed them some kind of compulsive desire that ruins your life, you know? Feelings change, you know? That's I, I really, really think that the most extreme feelings that I felt in the past when I was in like the depths of porn addiction had a lot to do with my child part because I think what was going on is this like child part within me didn't really feel like it was being protected and looked after appropriately by my adult self because when I did feel certain feelings my instant response would be to basically escape those feelings with pornography and so over time it's like there's this part of me that feels like it can't trust me to be in control of myself and what's happened over time is through actually dealing with the addicted part of the mind I've gained all this like trust from this like child part within me. And now yeah. it's like, there isn't this kind of like childlike feeling ever sort of present. It's kind of, or well, maybe it comes up now and then. I don't know. I can't remember the last time it came up, but it's like, there's, there's this like trust in myself, like this inner confidence yeah. of, you know what? I can kind of handle any situation now and I'm not going to get out of control and like lose my head. I will be in control. And I think, that's come from overcoming this addiction and so i really really do think that a lot of those challenging emotions that people feel they're actually coming from themselves and like their child part feeling like they can't actually trust like the adult part and that probably comes 
with these feelings that they felt when they were younger and maybe their ad like you know parents or whoever didn't yeah. look after them or treat them appropriately um, you care and, for them in a way that a child would need yeah so you try to, then you do this as an as an adult you take care of your child self there's a lot of reparenting stuff out there but you know one of the things we teach very specifically in the program is that when you're in an addiction you've got the addictive part of the mind you've got the rational self you've got the child self and when you're in that addiction the child self is on the same team as the addictive part of the mind. So you've got this addictive part of the mind that is super shrewd, deceptive, trying to trick you into thinking that, you know, engaging in the behavior is a good idea. But then it, then it brings along the child self, which may be wounded in whatever way, wasn't cared for. And they, and they think they can fool the child self because they're emotionally immature and unintelligent that's a child self you know so the addictive part of the mind can convince that child self that it's it's acting on its behalf so now you've got the shrewd addictive part of your mind and you've got the child self ganging up on you you know here's that emotionally immature you know pulling on your on your shirt come on i want i want i want i want i want right so now you got those two against you so one of the things that we that we facilitate is getting the child self on the same team as the rational self and learning to trust that rational self is going to take care of the child self and giving into that addictive behavior is not serving that child self. Protecting that child self, getting on the same team is one of the basic elements of, of the teaching. So yeah, good for you. That's awesome. And being yeah. able to have that clarity around that is is a is a major step you know yeah for sure yeah. sure yeah. but yeah thank you but anyway enough about me i feel like i've just kind of rambled on a bit myself but i'm just really grateful and excited today yeah. so all is well i'm super happy for you yeah well it's kind of thanks to you so i am grateful yeah. um but yeah is there anything else you kind of want to share in today's episode or do you want to wrap let's up? just keep bringing it to people and you know if people are struggling with other addictions they can always go to my website beyondcompulsion.com and and look at there's a lot of the testimonials there you know um from people struggling with other addictions there's other good information there too but i think too that we're um you know the guys or whoever can go to our school school.com and um and go there anonymously you know there doesn't have to be you might want to explain how they would do that so that yeah. it's just an anonymous yeah, thing because yeah. i know that's kind of a privacy can be an issue with this one yeah. yeah definitely definitely so yeah just to kind of run any listeners by that one so me and mary have been building this school community now for i don't know maybe about six months or so and it's essentially where we have all the videos so it's where mary's full video intensive series is kept but then we also have a recap video, which is me and Mary for each of the three phases. And then there's additional, you know, 40, 50 junkie thinking videos, which are based on our clients' junkie thoughts. So we're going to open that up very soon to anyone, essentially. So far, we've been keeping it quite private and closed just because we wanted to kind of manage numbers because it's been a fairly new thing. But we are opening that up soon. And yeah, it's a totally private, anonymous group. Uh, you don't need to like put in your actual name. You can use an alias and use a different photo. I think we've got one guy in there at the minute. He's got like a photo of Brad Pitt. And it's just like, you know, we want to make sure that people have that anonymity. Um, but yeah, feel free to get involved. We'll probably leave like a link in the description or something or just get in touch via my website, www.thomasmolyneux.com if you want to learn more about the program. It's also kind of cheap compared to like our competitors because I used to work for a guy and he was like, two thousand pounds plus and i know i'm not i won't mention too many names but there's a lot of guys in the porn addiction industry right now porn addiction recovery industry right now charging like four or five figures for these services but now nah, ours is like 250 dollars so yeah don't worry too much about that um 259 dollars i should say but yeah get involved if you want to let us know if you need any help with porn addiction recovery thanks for listening and we'll see you in the next episode Bye bye